people always talk about how do you direct the user's attention in VR if in fact they could be looking anywhere, the camera could be pointed anywhere, right? And the camera being the viewer. I could be looking behind me, for example, and the action's meant to be over there. Well, actually, you construct it into a spatial narrative, and you use the same ideas of how would we experience a story in the real world. Well, obviously, sound would attract us. Uh, things happening would attract us, whether it's falling rocks or whether it's people. And to be honest, what I found most of all, it is people. When we look around in a room and we're meant to walk one way or the other, if somebody is standing there doing something, we will walk over to the person rather than do nothing at all. In VR, we block the action so that it uses the entire 360 degree palette. You've got up, you've got down, you've got left, you've got right, you've got all around you. So don't just set things right in front of you, use the space. Start something here and have an actor end up over here. That way, the viewer has something to do besides just sit there. If you're watching people watch your VR piece and they're just staring in one place, you probably didn't do a good job. You really have this conflict between storytellers and viewers in a way because viewers suddenly they have this great degree of freedom and they're able to look all the way around the sphere and that's incredibly liberating for a viewer. But as a storyteller, that's incredibly scary because for decades and decades we've always used that fixed frame in order to guide the viewer's attention. So how do you strike a delicate balance of giving the viewer that liberation that they can look anywhere but yet also finding subtle cues that the storyteller can give the viewer to make sure they're not missing what you want them to see. One of the tools that we use to guide the audience's attention in VR is audio. So if you have audio that is coming from a particular part of, um, of the sphere, then that can direct the viewer's attention. So for example, in, our, in the first shot of On the Brink of Famine, there you're standing on a runway in a very rural area in South Sudan and there's a plane coming towards you but you can't see the plane at first and so as you're looking around and noticing the people in the village at some point the plane gets close enough and you can hear that plane so then you turn around to face the plane if you're not looking there already and it flies directly over your head. There are no best practices as of yet in terms of how to guide the user's attention in VR but some different techniques that we're messing and experimenting with is uh, changing the depth of field, uh, the blurring, adding a blur to bring the attention to what's in focus, uh, changing the colors, maybe making it darker. There are times where we're going to bring a photo and zoom it in to, your, to grab your attention. Um, those are visual cues that we're experimenting with. Um, when we have a better control and understanding of spatial audio, when it's easier to produce in spatial 360s, spatial audio, uh, we'll be able to pop in audio cues to get the user to look around. One of my favorite techniques that I've seen is an old, uh, now an old VR experience where a butterfly flew past your site and naturally you followed the butterfly and when you looked back you went from this beautiful meadow to a scary forest. These are new techniques that are coming out and are still very hard to find best practices but we're in the stage where you have to experiment. 